Hey guys, welcome back to Rapture Alerts. My name is Sean. If you're just tuning in, this is just a guy talking about Jesus. That's all I do over here. And I'm watching and waiting for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to take us home in a pre-tribulation rapture. I hope you're happy, healthy, and well, and that you have what you need. Guys, you know how I always say, I love you, I miss you, I'm praying for you? I really do mean that. Uh, I wanted to tell you, we're going into the weekend. You need to be careful about where you go and what you do. I hope you stay in your Bible. I hope you stick close with your family, and I hope you pray without ceasing. Please share these videos if you get time. I appreciate all of your support. I'm going to give you a couple of articles. We'll read chapter 11 of Revelation, and then we'll take a look at the commentary. Remember, if you need anything from me, my contact information is listed down in the description box. So reach out to me if you do need prayer or anything else. I'll do my best to help you out. Let's go ahead and open up a prayer and give the Lord thanks for even allowing me to come out here to be a messenger of his and to brag on him there's not much time left nobody knows the day or the hour but you know what i'm commanded to watch i'm commanded to be faithful and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to do it with a good attitude i'm not going to let the enemy get to me no matter what happens i'm ready to die for jesus are you remember that revelation is not the end for christians the saved the elect it is the beginning for us we're going to have a good time today. Come over here and hang out with me. I appreciate you so much. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for dying on the cross for my sins. I don't deserve that. Thank you for your blood and salvation, Jesus. Thank you for saving me from death. Thank you for saving me from hell. Thank you for everything that you do that I don't know. I trust you, Father, even though if I don't understand something at the time, I know your ways are perfect and you'll never let me down. Please give every single viewer the desires of their heart in accordance with your will. Please knock on the door of the hearts of the unsaved to where they can't ignore you anymore, Father. Please bang on their door of their heart. I know there's not much time left, Jesus. Please let these final precious moments be filled with peace. Please give me the words out here to be spoken by you and not myself. I pray for everybody's family watching this and their children. Please heal them from the sickness and disease and loneliness and anxiety that's going on right now, Father, because the enemy knows you're about to take us. Please shield and protect us, Father, until you arrive. Thank you so much for your mercy. Amen. Wow. Like I always say, Jesus is good, the Holy Spirit is good, they're both right here, and where would we be without them? We'd be dead, right? Let me take a look at some of these articles, and we'll, we'll just go over the headlines, okay? Search continues for suspect who drove through Oconee Nuclear Station Gate. This is up in the Carolinas, I think North Carolina, it's one of our largest nuclear stations. Some guy decided to drive through it and ram the security guards there, the officers, and so they shot at the vehicle. They're still looking for the suspect. They do not know where they are right now. Next uh, headline says, Israel's Netanyahu rules out Gaza ceasefire, ceasefires blink and presses for more aid. Can somebody please tell me why we sent the ice cream man over to Israel instead of using Zoom or something like that? Now we're going to send Anthony Blinken over there. Hey, I'm going to come fix everything. No, you're not. There's not a need for you to fly over there and do any of that that you're doing. You could seriously do it on a video conference call. But again, what do I know? I'm just a guy on a golf cart talking about Jesus. What do I know about misappropriation of funds in the United States government with the weakest administration? Exposed, Hamas's propaganda team. I found this from the Jerusalem Post. What this is saying is there's more than half a dozen people with serious amounts of followers online, but what they're doing is promoting Hamas propaganda on their social media platforms. Again, all these links are down in the description box, but you need to be careful about what you're looking at and listening to online. I put this in here. This is crazy. This is in my state. Hunters find and kill 12-foot python in southwest Brevard County, causing social media stir. I don't know if you like snakes or not. If you're into that, I can't stand snakes. But there's a picture of these two guys holding a 12-foot Burmese python, and it's alarming to me. I like to trample upon serpents. That's why I put it in there. If you want to look at that, you go ahead. If not, I totally understand. I don't do snakes, guys, for obvious reasons. Let's take a look at Revelation 11. This is the two witnesses. 
So you have seen quite a bit unfold thus far. Scrolls, seals, trumpets. There's interludes before certain trumpet blasts. We saw an eagle flying around in mid heaven saying, whoa, 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 a talking eagle? What do you think that's symbolic of? He's telling them what's coming, right? He's trying to tell them the word woe means distress. You have seen so much unfold, and I'm telling you, this chapter right here, it's going to take your breath away. This is the two witnesses that Jesus sends down here. Nobody knows who they are yet, but I definitely have my opinion of who I think they are. Let's jump into it. Then there was given to me a measuring rod like a staff, and someone said, Get up and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship in it. Leave out the courtyard which is outside the temple and do not measure it, because it has been given to the nations. He's talking about the Gentiles right there. And they will trample upon the holy city for 42 months, and I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days, clothed in sackcloth. Remember, 1260 days is exactly three and a half years. When we're taken in the rapture, Antichrist comes to power, explains us away, probably by an alien invasion or something like that, in this direction. It's got that peace treaty going on. It's signed. It's in effect. So for three and a half years of that seven of the tribulation, there is peace. We're gone, but they do have a little bit of peace down here, right? 1260 days at the end of that at that three and a half year mark the antichrist does break that treaty and it is literal hell on earth verse 4 says these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the lord of the earth and if anyone wants to harm them fire flows out of their mouth and devours their enemies and so if anyone wants to harm them he must be killed in this way you can't touch these guys man isn't that awesome fire comes out of their mouth and destroys and burns them up right there amen these have the power to shut up the sky so that rain will not fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every plague as often as they desire. They can send any plague anytime they want to. They got the sackcloth on. They're working for the Lord. They're the two witnesses. I'll go ahead and tell you right here who I believe them to be. Elijah and Moses. I don't know if you believe that or who you think they are. I don't know who the Lord would pick other than those two. Man, they're awesome, and I know they're going to do an incredible job. Let's take a look at verse 7. It says, When they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war with them and overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie on the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. So here, the Lord has a reason. He's allowing them to be killed. But watch what happens. Verse 9, those from the peoples, tribes, and languages, and nations will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days and will not allow their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. And those who live on the earth will rejoice over them and celebrate, and they will send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who live on the earth. They didn't want to hear God's word even after all of these chances. So here they are in the mix. They still don't want to hear it. They're still denying God. Let's see what happens here. Verse 11, And after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God came into them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell upon those who were watching them. What do you think this is doing to them that are right there? They can't stand them. They hate them. The beast kills them, and then they're laying there for three and a half days, dead in the street. They won't allow them to be buried properly. They're jumping around, singing, dancing, giving gifts to each other. And look what the Lord does. He puts his breath into them, and they stand up right there. Yeah, amen. That's the God you serve right there. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in the cloud, and their enemies watched them. And at that time, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. Wow. Kills 7,000 in the earthquake after his prophets die, brings him back to life. And then this happens right here. So what do you think that does to everyone down here? It makes them believe. It leads them to Jesus. There is a great revival down here. You have to understand, we're not here for it. But there is one, and that's great for us. They're going to be a part of our army and our family. They're just not there yet. 
you have to continue to pray. It doesn't matter if we're not here. This has already happened. John's been given the revelation. God's word is infallible. It cannot be messed up. It cannot make a mistake. It is the sharpest, most powerful weapon in the world. The second woe has passed. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. Remember that eagle that's flying around up there in mid heaven, John sees it's screaming, whoa, whoa, whoa. An eagle that can talk. And remember what the word woe means. It means severe distress. Let's see what's coming here. The seventh trumpet, Christ's reign foreseen. Verse 15 says, Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, This is us, guys. We give you thanks, Lord God, the Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. And the nations were enraged, and your wrath came, and the time came for the dead to be judged, and the time to reward your bondservants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, the small and the great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. Wow. And the temple of God, which is in heaven, was opened, and the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple, and there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder and an earthquake and a great hailstorm. Guys, in case you don't know, that is, that's the Ark of the Covenant. That's from Indiana Jones, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's the big gold thing. If you were a kid and grew up in the 80s and watched that, you got to remember, if you're not that old, you need to watch it because this is, this is what it's talking about. Look at how, look at how sovereign God is. He has a plan for everything. And even though we don't understand it, he's in control. Man, to really be able to see this in real life. Steven Spielberg, I, I think he did a pretty good job on that movie because you can see the thunder and smoke and lightning coming out of the Ark of the Covenant and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. And you know what happens when they open it and look at it. Yeah, they die, man, right? Evil's reign is coming to an end, guys. Jesus is alive and well. He is alive and well inside me. And I am his messenger. I promise you that he's on the way. All right, let's take a look at Revelation 11 commentary and let's see if we can go a little bit deeper into what we read and get a little bit more insight. This chapter introduces two prophets referred to as the two witnesses. Their message, supernatural power, death, and resurrection are dramatic moments in the story of end times. This is what I'm trying to tell you is this revival that takes place, it's going to take something like that. It's going to take two prophets in sackcloth from the master of the universe, burning people up that are touching them, casting plagues of all kinds on the earth, but they still don't believe. So he allows them to be defeated by the beast. And then look what happens. He breathes into them. They stand up and come back to life. And they're shocked. They're in awe. They're just, yeah, it leads them to Jesus. I love this. Their influence precedes the end of the trumpet judgments and sets the stage for the final series, the seven bowl judgments. So your seals and your trumpets, guys, and your scrolls, remember the bowls are coming. We still have the bowls to go. The Lord is not playing around. John is first given a measuring device and told to measure the temple, altar, and worshipers. Measuring in that area was symbolic of ownership. Only those who had rights to something, land, a building, or people were allowed to measure them. As part of this task, John is told that the outer court of the temple is not to be measured. This area occupied by the nations, which is a term for Gentiles as part of a trampoline experienced by Jerusalem in the end times. That's Revelation 11, 1 through 2. God next introduces two unidentified witnesses who stand in Jerusalem and proclaim him. Obviously, at this time, that message will not be well received. However, the men are supernaturally protected. Everyone who tries to hurt them is obliterated by fire from the witnesses' own mouths. These men are also able to bring various plagues on the earth, such as drought. Revelation 11, 3 through 6. Finally, these two men will be murdered by the beast that rises from the bottomless pit. Most interpreters believe this is the same beast described in Revelation chapter 13, also referred to as the Antichrist. To the unbelieving world, this will seem like a major victory. Their leader will have defeated those claiming to speak for God. 
Yeah, right. The world will be so overjoyed at this triumph that they will celebrate and exchange gifts while leaving the bodies to rot in the streets. Thanks to modern technology, it's entirely possible that the people across the entire world can see these events happen in real time. It's Revelation 11, 7 through 10. How do you think everyone can see this? Like scripture saying, it's the technology, it's the TV, it's the internet. Earlier, those reading, excuse me, after three and a half days, however, the joy of the world will turn into shock and horror. God will resurrect the two witnesses in full view of the world, announced by a voice and carried by a cloud. They will be taken into heaven. Imagine these two prophets, these two witnesses, not only coming back to life and fire coming out of their mouths before and casting plagues, but they get to go on their escort to heaven in a cloud? Man, that's awesome. After three and a half days, however, the joy of the world will turn into shock and horror. God will resurrect the two witnesses in full view of the world, announced by a voice and carried by a cloud. They will be taken into heaven. At the same time, a massive earthquake will strike Jerusalem, destroying a tenth of the city and killing 7,000. Those who survive will not honor God deliberately, but their fearful reactions will demonstrate his glory. Earlier, those reading Revelation were warned about certain woes yet to come. The first and second of these were the fifth and sixth trumpet judgments, respectively. These were far worse than the terrible trumpet judgments that came before. The third woe will be inaugurated with the seventh trumpet. Just as the seventh trumpet judgment judgments were all part of the seventh seal, the seventh trumpet will contain individual events known as the bowl judgments. In the meantime, as the seventh trumpet sounds, heaven praises God for his righteous judgment on evil. The next few chapters will discuss seven major figures in the end times, including the Antichrist and the false prophet. Chapter 16 will resume the sequence of judgments and begin bringing the book of Revelation to a close. We'll set our notes down there for today, guys. That's Revelation 11. So what do you think about the book so far, guys? Are you getting excited? Do you believe what I'm trying to tell you? This is not the end for us. This is the beginning. You gotta get excited. You gotta get pumped up. You gotta interact with one another and you definitely have to pray. That's what we're commanded to do without ceasing, just like Paul did. And remember that the Lord is on the way. He's not gonna fail or forsake us, he's not. So even if you feel alone, you're not. Remember that Footprints poem that I, that I posted and we talked about? He's right there with you. He's carrying you when you think you're alone. Make no mistake about it, the rapture is at hand. He's coming, but you can't give up. You do have to confide in him. If you mess up, crawl back to the cross like I do. God isn't going to hurt you. Jesus doesn't want that for you. He wants you to talk to him. He wants to forgive you. He wants to help you, but you have to give him a chance and open up. you got to let your guard down. What would happen to you right now if you died? You don't come back as a tree or a fish. You're not going to come back as a, a talking eagle flying in the sky. Those things are for a purpose. Your purpose is to honor and love Jesus. If you want to, that's why he gave you that free will. Remember, the enemy doesn't give you that. You don't have a choice with the enemy. You do with Jesus. He loves you. That's why he laid his life down for you and spilled his blood so that you could have eternal life. So if the rapture isn't right now, a few moments from now, or even tonight, keep doing what we always say over here. You keep looking up, and we'll see you up top.